What's up, y'all? I'm Baratunde, and I'm here with Alex Bendana and Miguel Oso Ramirez from the band La Santa Cecilia. What's up, y'all? What's up, man? How's it going? Bienvenido. Yeah, Gracias. Yeah. Yeah. It's very good. Got it down. Uh... I got all the Spanish right there. Bienvenido. <laughs> uh, I want to jump right into it. And in, you told the New York Times in an interview that when you guys started this band, it had no explicit political agenda. Right. But now, when you look at music videos like El Hielo, when you listen to the lyrics, there's a lot of politics in there. What changed? Uh, yeah, we didn't start off with that intention, really, ever. Um, we started off because we love music. We're super fans of music, you know what I mean? Music changed our life, and um, we wanted to do a project that reflected that. But once we started, like, kind of coming together and all our influences started coming together, we started traveling and one of our members couldn't travel, mm. right? Yeah, our recording player couldn't, you know, we couldn't take him to Texas. We were being called to go to Texas to go. I mean, a lot of people don't want to go to Texas. Well, <laughs> you know, you know, I mean, it was, it was just to basically to get out, you know, as a band, we, we were growing, we were being asked to go to different places and yeah. all our members couldn't really go. So we were like, man, what do we do? We felt we were stuck. We were stuck in this position where we couldn't do anything about it, you know? And, and break it down for those who don't know, why could not all of your members go to, especially to Texas? Well, our member Pepe, Jose, um, was undocumented for 26 years, yeah. about that, yeah. yeah. So he couldn't travel with us out, out of the country, even out of the state at that time, you know? What's the risk for him of traveling outside of the state, certainly out of the country? Well, deportation, yeah. you know? And especially at that time in Arizona, to, you know, to drive to Texas, we had to drive to Arizona. Sheriff Joe. So, <laughs> yeah, exactly, Arpaio. So uh, it was a big risk, and we would go through the north, actually. So we take the 40, drop all the way down, and that'll go on another day to our trip. Yeah. That's like a very special version like Waze or Google Maps, like routing around <laughs> deporters. <laughs> Actually, <Yeah. laughs> like undocumented filter on Waze. What happened was that I called a friend whose dad was a, a, an actual agent, and he told us, well, he told her to tell us to go through the north and we would avoid the check you know, wow. getting checked. Yeah. Yeah. Just to be able to play a gig that you were invited to do. It was South by Southwest. It was our first time. So that's, that's huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was crazy. And, and then uh, that kind of, you know, just seeing them having to stay back. Mm -hmm. uh, well, he didn't stay back on that trip. But when we, when we left to, for the first time, Chicago, and then went to Mexico for the first yeah. time, and he couldn't go. And it was just like, it was heartbreaking. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Because we're, it's a collective dream. The band's a collective dream, and it's a collective vision. And to see... Him not being able to fulfill that was really difficult for us, you know? Can you tell me another story, one that goes back maybe to your childhood in terms of having dual influences of both Mexican and American identities, and how did that play out in your early life in terms of reconciling, combining, enjoying, or having some conflict between these two senses of yourselves? My parents are from Nicaragua. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's, it's just a, that identity thing is you grow up with that. You know, I grew up with the culture at, at, my, at my house, you know? I was eating the food from Nicaragua, from Venezuela, from all these, you know, from all that richness, you know? And then, but going to school, you know, and, and, this, and meeting all these people, Americans, you know, or whatever. So I was like getting these two worlds, you know, growing up with these two worlds and, and like trying to develop and always trying to combine them together, you know? Yeah, and it's crazy because, you know, for, I think, you know, when if you were to come into our house when we were kids, um, you were gonna go to Nicaragua and you're gonna go to Mexico. You're gonna go to, our parents are from little towns, so mm. you kind of have that, that upbringing that's like, not super, super rigid or, or traditional, but it's like, you know, it's kind of like country, like the country kind of vibe. And, you know, for my, in my house, my parents didn't really speak English. Um, the music they listened to was all in Spanish. We ate nothing but Mexican food. Like, I needed American food until I was older. But, so it was, it was weird, because you were at home, you were like, it was like if you were in Latin America or Mexico, and then when you left the house, you were obviously an American kid going to school and with your friends socializing, and, right. and it, was, it was interesting. I have one question related to Mr. Donald Trump, who is the Republican nominee for president, obviously, um, because the way he launched his campaign was a very specific way he launched his campaign. He launched it with some very uh, strongly worded attacks on Mexicans, and he says, look, they're bringing crime, drugs, rapists. As people who have brought music and culture to the country, how did you feel about that? Do you still even think about the way he launched his campaign and how it reflects on what you've actually brought to this country? Uh, well, 
we try not to think about what what he said too much, you know. Um, we were really affected by what he said, though, yeah. you know. Um, simply because we're a band that, man, like, 24-7, we're working to represent who we are and our people in a positive way, you know. So it's like, it's, you know, a lot of bands kind of, uh, they just kind of have fun. They party, they make party music. They make music that doesn't necessarily reflect what's going on in society, you know. Um, for us, I think that fortunately, we, we like, through a, a song like El Yellow, we discovered that power of what it is to, to tell your own story for within your own community and what that can do to change the world around you. And so for us, man, for him, for him to say something like that about our community, where we come from, where we're like, you know, three years deep into a tour, not sleeping, like doing promo nonstop, just talking about what's going on within our community hurt us a lot. But at the same time, I think it, it empowered a lot of people in our community because it made us kind of a little more conscious of, of us needing to unify as Latinos in the United States, you know? I mean, I was offended, you know, and I'm sure many people who come here to this country to work, to do, to like dream about becoming something here, you know, were really appalled by that, you know, and I think it, it was just a negative, negative way of seeing yeah. the immigrants in this country, you know. With immigration being such a hot issue in this election, why do you think there's been such a strong community of anti-immigrant sentiment, more than it seems over the past decade, maybe two decades even. Man, I don't know. I think it's just, you know, with the, with, the economy, with the economy failing like it did and stuff, I think it was just like, you know, we need a scapegoat kind of thing, you know what I mean? And for us, um, if, you, if you know the, the facts and the reality of, of the contributions that immigrants make to this country, and not to just this country, but to any country, really, when there's an influx of immigrants, uh, they actually boost the economy. They actually do pay taxes. Part of what's happening I think with the anti-immigration sentiment, for some white Americans, it's a feeling of threat because of the, the demographic changes that are happening. And it's like, oh, there's more people of color, there's more immigration going on. And so they feel like that is kind of erasing some part of America. How do you feel as uh, someone who might be erasing someone else's sense of what this country is? I mean, I feel like that's completely wrong way to view things yeah. because Diversity is beautiful, you know, and the diver diversity is what actually made this country so great, you know. All the immigrations from all history, you know, that have come here have become great scientists or great doctors or whatever, great contributors to, to what we know as the United States, you know, and I think to view it like that is just really narrow-minded, you know. Like everything that we, that we see as the identity or what we call the United States, for example, wouldn't be what it is without the African diaspora wouldn't be what it is without indigenous people, wouldn't be what it is without what happens with those like magical moments when, when people from different cultures are coming together, you know, uh, mixed family, mixed race families and stuff. It's like this, it's this beautiful thing that happens. And, and I think people just, I don't think actually, you know, the, the media exploits a lot of the, a lot of the fear, but man, we've been all over the country and we've played in places like, man, Tulsa, Oklahoma with country artists, where the, you know, the, the audience is predominantly Anglo and stuff, and we're just like, and we're blown away by, by how open they actually are, you know what I mean? Like, and I think that's why we're so attracted to music, because it allows us to see how, how people can become so open and so not ignorant, not racist, not, not afraid, you know what I mean? And so it's cool, you know, but we've gotten to see the opposite of, of what the media tells us. We've gotten to see how beautiful people are in this country and how, they're, they are actually super open-minded, right? I'd love to talk a bit about President Obama, who this summer tried to extend protections to a class of undocumented Americans and was held up in doing that by the Supreme Court. They were deadlocked, they're missing a member. How did that near miss, that pause in progress, strike you all? We were there at the Supreme Court playing an event right outside of the, the, the steps uh, for that very same reason. Um, it was a big blow, you know? Anytime something that, you know, prohibits an immigration reform in this country happens, it's, it's a blow for us uh, because we were, like I said, we work really hard towards it. It's, a, it's such a personal thing for us, um, being that we're all immigrants or children of immigrants in the band. And so it was rough, you know what I mean? We know that he's, he's trying to do good things, but he's also, he's also been tagged with, 
with the nickname uh, Deporter in Chief because he's deported more people than any president in the history of the United States. It's a big deal to us. And, and like my parents benefited from an immigration reform in, in the 80s. Right. And so, yeah. Yeah. So, and a lot of my family members did. And, you know, they, it did nothing but positive things for, for our family, for, for everything, you know, for even if, just, if you look at it even from the, from the standpoint of the economy, it boosts the economy so much, you know. And so, yeah, it was, it, was, it was a big bummer. But we're still, you know, we haven't lost hope. And, and yeah. I think someone asked me the other day, like, uh, what would be one of the biggest milestones in your career if you, if you can have, like, a vision of the future? And I said, hopefully that we can see an immigration reform happen before, you know, we're over as a group. That would be a huge thing for us, you know? Yeah. Most bands are like, I want five platinum records. I want a VMA. You're like, I want immigration reform. <laughs> <laughs> like that's a pretty dope professional yeah, milestone cool, to have man. as a music group yeah because yeah. it's been it's been something that like like i said we never started off like as this band that had all these political banners and we're like yeah man we got to do this and do that it wasn't like we never had that that idea but um seeing how it kind of just naturally evolved into that um it's just such a such a passion of ours to just to just be able to to represent our people, man, in whatever way we can, you know, because we're so misrepresented, you know. Do you all ever feel overly burdened or exhausted by this idea that you're not merely a band, but that you're trying to represent Chicanos or all of Latin America in the process? <laughs> all of Latin America. Wow, Alex, you ready man. for that? Well, that's <laughs> a big load, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some, um, sometimes because we're musicians, you know, it's like we're not politicians, but we're people who are politically aware and have a conscience and want to do good things. So. Um, a lot of times it's like, hey, you guys interested in doing this? And sometimes we're like, man, we just want to play music. You know what I mean? We hope that people like our music, our records and stuff, and that they listen to other songs that aren't so political and stuff. And we do go back and forth sometimes, you know, with like our producers. Sometimes we're talking to them and we're like, hey, man, this night. He's like, well, he talks to us and he's like, look, man, we're, we're living in some very heavy political times, you know? And that you guys are able to even talk about that stuff and articulate it is a huge blessing for you guys because, you know, you guys are, are becoming a part of something greater than, than yourselves, you know. And so it's like sometimes it's, it's a little, little much because, yeah. you know, sometimes I just want to play drums and hang out and party too, you know. Yeah, I just want to make people dance sometimes <laughs> and, forget, and kind of forget about all this for a little yeah. bit. But I think, I think the band does a good job to, to bring it all together, you know. Yeah. And one show, if you go to a band, the show, you know, you'll see the, the whole emotional roller coaster that we put you through. And we talk about El Yellow, but we also talk about dancing and having a good time and all these emotional, human emotions that yeah. we all have.